A well-known characteristic of oscilloscopes is that when the sweep is not synchronized to the displayed waveform, the waveform appears to move on screen. To the right, if the sweep is running above the waveform frequency, or above a submultiple of the waveform frequency, and to the left, if the sweep is below the waveform frequency or a submultiple. More than 40 years ago, when I was in high school, we were studying wave phenomena in physics class. I had access to a dual trace oscilloscope and realized that if one channel were displaying a signal of a frequency above the sweep frequency, and the other channel a signal below the sweep frequency, that the two waveforms would appear to move in opposite directions and could represent the forward and reflected waves on a transmission line. Further, by using the ability of the scope to add two channels, the result would be a single waveform representing the standing wave pattern on the transmission line. I set up a demo using two audio generators, but the generators and the scope sweep were hard to set and so unstable that it was barely useful. I've revisited the idea occasionally over the years, but each time I looked at it, the necessary hardware seemed too complex. Recently, I've been able to accomplish this demo using direct digital synthesis to generate the exact frequencies required. You're looking at a 399 hertz sine wave with the scope sweep triggered at 400 hertz. Let's consider this the forward wave of frequency 1 hertz moving down a transmission line. Of course, it's a very long transmission line with a very slow propagation velocity. This is a 401 hertz sine wave with the scope sweep still triggered at 400 hertz. Let's consider this the reflected wave on the same transmission line. Now we see both waves. The amplitude of the reflected wave is about the same as the forward wave, so the transmission line must be open or shorted. Switching the scope to add mode, we see the resulting standing wave. It is indeed a standing wave with no apparent motion along the transmission line. The minimum amplitude is zero, so the voltage standing wave ratio, the ratio of maximum to minimum amplitude, is infinite. Now the reflected amplitude is about half the forward. This is done by reducing the gain of the bottom channel. This simulates a transmission line that is neither a short nor an open, but not the characteristic impedance of the transmission line either. Switching to add mode again, this is the resulting standing wave pattern. The ratio of the maximum to minimum is 2 to 1, about 2 to 1, so the voltage standing ratio is 2 to 1. Unlike the case where the forward and reflected waves were equal, this wave does appear to move. This shows that some power is being delivered to the terminating impedance. The key to creating this demo is the ability to generate the exact frequencies needed, in this case, two sine waves at 399 and 401 hertz and a scope trigger signal at 400 hertz. This is easily done with direct digital synthesis using an Arduino board driving a Maxim 548 digital to analog converter. The Max 548 is a dual channel 8-bit DAC interface to the Arduino with SBI, serial peripheral interface, using just three lines, clock data and slave select. A couple of dozen lines of code drives the two DAC channels to produce the two sine waves and drives the digital pin to generate a square wave for the scope trigger. This is an implementation with just the minimum parts needed, just an at mega 328 on a board with a few parts, required parts, and the maximum D to A converter. The demo works best on an old-fashioned analog scope as I've been using up to now. This is the display on a digital scope, an O1 SDS6062. Some digital scopes won't work well for this demo depending upon the screen type and the update rate, but this O1 does a pretty good job. The display is a little jumpy due to the update rate. Where the digital scope really shines is in its simulation of persistence. It's easier to see the minimum and maximum amplitude, actually the envelope of the standing wave ratio, and to calculate the voltage standing wave ratio. In this case, again, this the return wave is half of the forward wave, and you can clearly see this the voltage standing wave ratio is the amplitude of the maximum to minimum of the wave in the middle.